welcome to my channel. Today I'm looking at slow cooking. I'm slow cooking a couple of meals for you and one dessert. Now as with everything when you're cooking in a slow cooker, everybody's slow cooker is different. So the timings that I'm giving you are approximate. You need to adjust it for your slow cooker. Slow cooker. For your slow cooker. Anyway, Liz, what are you doing first? Well Liz, first I'm doing a chicken casserole. Let's see how it's done. So this slow cooker recipe is one of my own, it's chicken stew, uh, which sounds fairly mainstream, but it is full of flavor and it's relatively quick to put together. <clears throat> so first of all, I'm going to slice up one onion. So this is just one large onion. You can use a smaller onion and put some leeks in if that's what you want to do, but I don't have any leeks at the moment so I'm going to make do with one large onion because they're from the same family so just chop them up now these are going to be cooking for some time so you do need them to be quite big pieces there go. chop the end off so all I do is just chuck it in basically <laughs> so that goes in and we're going to take some carrots. Now these are carrots left over from the middle of the week when my husband was making tea. That was all it was. And these have just got a white sort of, just means they've dried out a little bit. Don't worry about it. These are ready to go. So just chop them in half and pop them in. So these are baby carrots. Chantonier carrots are nice those in as well um, or you can use normal carrots and just cut them into big chunks. Then we need to add some herbs and spices so I'm going to add some sage. Let your heart decide I think is how it's put so just a little sprinkling of sage over there. Whatever herbs you want really. I'm doing thyme as well let your heart decide there you, go. you can you can put too much in yes but if you're just sprinkling over the top so there's a light residue you're fine it's yours do what you want with this all right celery salt now i it's a good idea to put some stalks of celery in this stew however i don't have any celery either so in its place i use celery salt so just like Oh, a teaspoon again that you have decide a couple of bay leaves if you don't have them leave them out it's not the end of the world but I do find they add to it so there's one these are off my own tree so it's fairly cheap otherwise they are quite expensive bay leaves two bay leaves going in there then we're going to put in some stock. Now I'm using today some no um, stock pots. You can use just no stock cubes. I've done that before and you want to, if you can get them out of the pot. So I just tip them in. So there's one going in, if it'll let me. This is a, what the Americans call a dump and go. How long does it take a person to get a stock cube out of a, <laughs> of a garden? <laughs> Too long. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to add your chicken. Now I've got here four chicken breasts. So I'm gonna cut these up and put them in my stew. I'm gonna take the chicken and cut it into pieces. So, and you want to cut it down the middle and then into four pieces so so one two into three pieces sorry you don't want them too small because they're going to be cooking for a while so there's one two we go three so into three pieces now normally i would use chicken thighs in this but my son hates chicken thighs so he's at home today so we're using chicken breast, it works well. 
that's not a problem. It doesn't dry out like some people say it does. It's so long as you're careful with it and don't overdo it. Um, the fluid will help to uh, moisten the chicken as it cooks. So that's four chicken breasts in there. Now this is to feed about uh, six people. Now then, once you've done that, it's time to get some bacon. This is the only bit that needs cooking before you put it in. Okay, so I've just cooked up a load of bacon, as you can see here. Um, I'm going to put this, I know it's hot, but it's gonna warm up anyway. So I'm going to put it into my slow cooker. Hopefully, easily, there we go. Just drop everything in. Now that's really good quality um, dry cured bacon from the butcher that one. Then all we need to do is take some apple juice or dry cider, whichever you have on hand. If you don't have either, water will do. And we're going to have one cup of dry cider in the mix. Let that settle for a minute, see if we're at the top. Which kind of looks as if we are. There we go. And then in it goes. One cup should be enough. You can check later if it's looking a bit dry. And then we're going to pop it on for a minimum of six hours. So the chicken's got about an hour to go now, the chicken casserole, so I'm just going to have a look at it, give it a stir, and then thicken it. Now, you can thicken it with corn flour if that's what you want to use. You can thicken it with gravy granules, it's up to you. I'm going to, or you don't have to thicken it at all, it's up to you. I'm going to use Bisto gravy granules, not because I'm as common as muck, which yes I am, but hey. Um, no, this is because the family love Bisto, so, <laughs> ah, Bisto, <laughs> so yes, off we pop and see what's going on. I'll just pop that in So what I'm going to do is give this stir, Let's see how it's doing, which it's doing really well actually, it's not got long left. So any bits that are out of the the juice, put them back in. And I usually make a well in the middle there. Put everything to the side for a minute or two and then pop in my gravy granules. And it's not a measured art, I'm afraid, but so about, about a tablespoon maybe there. Give it a stir. And see how it is. And if it's not as thick not thick enough to your liking then put in a little bit more if it is which it certainly is here for me then um, we'll just let that continue as is until we're ready for it there we go so i've got some cabbage here to do to go with it along with um, some baby new potatoes from my garden and we'll see how we get on This might be a good time for you to hit the like button if you like what I'm doing. Thank you. Next up we've got Chinese style beef. An absolutely gorgeous slow cooker recipe that can be fed to anybody and it's healthy. Liz, how are you going to do this? So I'm searing my meat in batches at the moment ready to go into my slow cooker. It's on a very high heat. And we're just putting a bit of colour, nothing else. We just want to make a bit of colour on the inside. You don't have to do this bit. It's not vital. It's up to you whether you do it or not. I have just put it in and it's been fine. So we're just getting a bit of sear on both sides. And then stick it in. And then go with your next stop. 
don't put it all in at once if you are going to do this because it will stew rather than cook and you end up with this amount of water in the bottom of the pan which you don't want doesn't need to be browned on all sides just the two to give it a bit of flavour and then pop it in Leave that to cool down. Oops. I'm going to add one sliced onion. This is just a large sliced onion, which we're going to pop in there, break it up as we go. I've cut it on the angle because we're doing like a Chinesey style, so they often have theirs cut lengthways rather than across the way. And carrot and I've cut that on the diagonal as well just so it looks nice so that's one large carrot and to that I'm going to add some ginger and some garlic we're going to add two teaspoons of garlic because that's one if you've got fresh garlic about two to three cloves of garlic So I couldn't find my ginger so I've used some ready grated ginger that I had in the freezer and to this I'm going to add a quarter cup of oyster sauce, if it'll come out, here we go, I love oyster sauce, it's gorgeous, so just dump that around. Okay. To that I'm going to add quarter cup of soy sauce and this is dark soy sauce so this is for the colour and an eighth of a cup of ice wine so about that much ice wine along with quarter cup of sweet chilli sauce or just under a quarter of a cup actually okay okay then we're going to sprinkle in an oxo cube so in it goes an oxo cube And then one cup of water, warm water. So one cup of hot water. Now we're going to just gently pour it over so some of the stuff goes to the bottom. There we go. Okay, that's that for now. Later on we'll add a few extra things such as peppers and what have you. But for now that's it. I'm going to put this on to cook. Um, my slow cooker on low for about eight hours. Okay, see you later. Okay, next up we have rice pudding. Yeah, rice pudding. Liz, how are you going to do that? So I'm going to do now a slow cooked recipe, but a slow cooked dessert, and it's going to be slow cooked rice pudding. It's an old recipe of my mother-in-law's, um, but I've updated it to go in the slow cooker. Now it looks a bit dirty, this slow cooker, but I promise you it isn't. I, I forgot to put butter the sides of the dish before I put the rice in, so I had to tip the rice out. So I'm just going to generously butter the sides of this dish, first of all so that nothing sticks you do need to be fairly generous with this and it is good for it anyway because butter's lovely inside your rice pudding so we'll just 
make sure we get a nice covering of butter hopefully it won't stick sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't we'll find out won't we, this time so then what we're going to do is take 200 grams of rice this is short grain pudding rice pop that in the bottom along with um, a tablespoon for now of sugar and a, a tablespoon is roughly four teaspoons so there we go and this is vanilla extract so we're going to pop that in there we go I think that's nearly at the end of its legs that one then we're going to add in a pint and a quarter of milk now I'm going to some of that milk is going to be evaporated um, reason being is it's my mother-in-law's recipe and she used evaporated milk so I am and it does actually give a nice creamy taste so we'll just pop that in to our jerk And to that, I'm going to top it up with oops, some full fat milk, which is here. So some full fat up to one and a quarter pints. And we're going to tip that in. There we go. Now all we need to do is give it a little stir to evenly distribute the rice. That's it. And then we're going to put the lid on and put it on low for three and a half and see how it is. today i hope you enjoyed what you saw if you did please consider subscribing 95 percent of the people who watch my videos don't subscribe so it would be nice if you could come and join us if you've got any comments leave them in the section below and let me know which one you're going to try or if you've already tried it let me know how you go out if you want to see any more recipes from me you can look here and if you want to see any desserts from me you can look here until next week bye now